Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Horror Ram. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're doing another Women of Horror Spotlight. Today, I have the actress who has been in, in everything from grotesque to most recently the movie that everybody has been, the buzz has been around, Skin and Marink, and Grotesque Part 2 is coming out soon. I have Jamie Hill. Jamie, how's it going? All right, very well, thank you. It's a, it's a nice summer day. It's a nice time to sit and chat while I'm uh, not dying outside in the heat this summer. Yes, it is definitely hot, hot here as well. So um, I just recently watched um, Skin and Um That movie definitely had a lot of buzz. Good, bad, in the middle as well. Um, it's definitely a unique movie. So tell me a little bit about how did you get that role as the mother in the movie? Well, Skin and Inc., we ended up filming um, in the summertime. Uh, it wasn't much planning because it was a, a small script with only the four people. And there, there already was a local buzz around Edmonton that I fit the mom role for other mom roles. So Kyle, Kyle had known of me before and asked me if I would be interested in chatting about a mom role. And uh, of course I said yes for the mom role. He then proceeded to ask me if I knew anyone that had any children. And I'd recently worked with Ross and his son Lucas and his other son Rylan in, in another um, indie clip and uh, recommended him. So right away spoke to Kyle and we built a, a little skin and rank family within that day. And although we never filmed together at the same time, we all ended up in, in Kyle's family childhood home, which his parents still live in and uh, film different scenes. I'm never on set with the children. And really? um, no, it, it just looks like it with the way the camera and different shots were made. So it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of different ways that we made things look in, in particular ways and the way Kyle wanted things to sound in a certain way. So there was a lot of conversation on how things would work before we even sat down. And there was a full script with where we were going to sit and what kind of feelings we were going to um, make others feel, which was the best part of the movie is I, I wanted to, I wanted to scare people. <laughs> yeah. And it definitely did a great job of that. I mean, it was a movie. I mean, it's an indie horror movie. It definitely got some traction through the web, through the message boards, and it became this phenomenon in the, I would say in the indie horror community. Now, for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, give them a quick, what is the movie about? Well, it's about two children that are in their house. It's dark. It's the evening, and they're watching cartoons throughout the evening. They end up watching um, it's their older VCR tapes that actually Kyle had as a kid, and I remember them too. Their VCR tapes we would get at the the Dollarama and throw into the VCR and watch. So they weren't something that just our grandparents watched, which somebody was speaking of somewhere on a podcast. We actually did have those tapes kicking around because the the videos in the the film are actually relevant to what's happening in Skin and Rake, the film. And um, there's a lot of little um, clues in there that if you pay attention, it's a little bit easier to understand what the film's about. However, a lot of people don't have the patience or the mindset to watch that much without the plot you really have to think of the plot as your own uh story and journey and wondering what these children are what they're going through because they're only four and six and how would you feel if you were that age and something was scaring you when you're that young you don't have the concrete thinking in the front of frontal lobe of your brain so i was intrigued to be uh the mom in that role, but also being a mother and raising kids and having a nursing background with developmental psychology really intrigued me to help others understand what little kids feel when they're alone in a house at night. And it could be scary, even sounds. And, you know, we've all 
most of all of us have been around a house at night, whether you were sleeping in your aunt's house or you're at a sleepover, it, it, something scared you in there. And the the progression through the, the film is certainly like that. The, some people said it was too long. Some people said it was it shouldn't be a short. Um, it could be a few minutes, but uh, you know it's about the build up and the intensity and the feelings. And I think by the time you get to meet me in the film, you are very tense, and you better be very tense. Uh, mm-hmm. There's not a lot of clues of what happened in the film, but there are. You just really have to pay attention. Um, I love reading all the podcast articles about. Um, what people think and who I am and why I'm there or if I am there and like what the family structure is and it's been a a lot of fun collecting. I have pages of podcast names that I've been reviewing and uh, you know it's a lot of fun going from zero to ten because not everybody likes it and some people love it and it's fascinating just to know, you know, some people can feel something from a film and some people can't. But that's because that's what makes us all different and unique, you know. And like you said, it's definitely a movie that it doesn't give you a lot of clues. You definitely have to use your imagination and you also have to you definitely have to watch a whole entire movie for it somewhat makes sense. Yeah, well, you got to understand he's only four. Little Lucas is only four. So what is he saying? Because sometimes you see what he sees. Sometimes you see what um, what Dahlia Rose is seeing. Um, so the two children are the point of view most of the time. However, you know, there's a point of view there of a demon or something in that space looking into those other spaces. And there's th- something in the dark. I know I'm in the dark sometimes. Uh, I know Ross sat in the corner on the bed in the dark sometimes. So... I can't say it's just a demon. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've worked in the medical profession before coming over to horror. How do you transition from being a nurse to a horror actress? I stayed in mental health. So I never went into being an RN because I didn't want to be in an office. So I kept working right right with people in the communities and my most recent job was at a psychiatric hospital i loved my job helping people get out of bed um there's a lot of stories you hear a lot of trauma and you know people don't understand people don't want to share people have been afraid to share feelings and and that kind of trauma where we all actually go through it so wanting to help others understand the expression of trauma through film and through mental health with my background. I guess being able to recognize it, uh, maybe want to just advocate for it and and help others uh, recognize it and, you know, understand that that's it could be an anxiety. It could be a PTSD. It, things happen when you're young and you don't know. It, it, Many parents didn't even know, you know, leaving your child at six months old sitting in their room on their bed could be detrimental to them if you don't pop your head back in there. Because in the 50s, they used to say, just let your kid cry themselves to sleep. Yeah. And fortunately, my parents had to go through those kind of things. So intergenerational trauma has begun before even anybody even knows. So the films that have to do with mental health, it... Even grotesque has to do with the, uh, an mm-hmm. interesting character. They they intrigued me to want to to be perceived in different views. So in this film, Skin Rank, I'm scary. Um, and I, I like to say all a few of my films I've chosen to do because I get to show others different perspectives and masking. You know, when when someone's had something fearful happen to them, sometimes they just smile and nod. I've heard from a lot of people who work in horror movies, whether it be directors, actors, actresses, or even um, even makeup and design that, you know, um, that working just at, as an actor or working in the film industry helps with PTSD. It helps with depression. It helps with anxiety. It has helped individuals 
with you know trauma that they've had in the past. I mean, that's an interesting concept, and I mean, and that's amazing as well. Well, there should always be someone on set that's uh, qualified to talk to people about those kind of events because. No matter whether you acknowledge that they're going through your 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 body's going through those emotions and events and it's even the people watching it there should always be someone around so you can speak about your feelings and everything when you're going through something so even when someone's playing a role that's that that bad or um if, if you get hurt and you go through a trauma that you're say you're you're a victim either way there should always be a conversation about mental health and on sets and I, I'm proud to say I get to do that in Alberta and hopefully around the world one day. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm glad, you know, in this country, well, throughout the world that, you know, mental health is something that we're finally talking about, also um, representing in movies and mm -hmm. society, because it's definitely something important. It's something that for the longest time, it's been something that we turned our head to or was even, you know, um, I would say uh, having a bias towards. So oh. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, more and more mental health is being brought out. So speaking of an upcoming role, so Grotesque Part 2 is coming out. It is. It is. And you're going to be in it. I have a little role in it. I wanted to be more involved with my my local indie friends, but things got quite busy after Skin and Rink. So I worked it out with my friends that I have a, a new role, and um, she's she's different than Nina. Nina was naive. This one's not so much. And um, you know, we always try to be friends with our our Mildred Moye, but uh, she doesn't always like us. I may have may not. <laughs> gotten killed already in this one that's all awesome. <laughs> but it's definitely comedy the comedy horror you know it, it's much more different than skid and this one makes you laugh um, it's filming on this set is quite hard because we will hold it until brandon says cut and we are laughing at times because this brilliant lady is just cracking us up and uh then you add all the rest of us on set and you know we're a bunch of comedians up here in Canada so we have a good time we're a good family we've made a few movies together and it's just so easy to work with Elizabeth it's it's a lot of fun and you know people are putting their hands up to to ask Elizabeth to come and have them murder her in, in our films <laughs> that's amazing uh, I'm definitely looking for I'm, I'm a huge fan of grotesque part one the first one I'm looking forward to the sequel all right, so, all right, so I've got some random questions on that. Since this is a horror show, you're a horror actress, I'm going to ask you some questions. Sure. What is your favorite horror franchise? I always like Chucky. I've always liked the Chucky shows. Um, Child's, Child's Play was my, my, my scary enjoyment as a kid. Uh, mm -hmm. Poltergeist scared the crap out of me, but made me want to know more about horror movies. Uh, so that's, I guess it started at Poltergeist. Chucky's always been my favorite. Uh, I have puppets and I, as a kid, I had dolls. So Chucky's quite uh, scary at times. Um, so Chucky's could, definitely a good one. Yeah, and uh, you know, it would be a lot of fun to do another film about you know a scary puppet not that my puppets are very scary she's she's <laughs> very friendly um anything with a puppet the movie it not much for clowns so i'm eager to see my and meet my terrifier friends that i i've gotten to collaborate with over clubhouse and stuff and speak with but you know um i i like clowns i i don't really like art he, he's not very nice to anybody. <laughs> so, um, you know, growing up as a kid in Vancouver and, you know, having it out as a kid. And my, my drama teacher was actually an actor in that film. And he was one of the people who really got me wanting to be an actor in grade eight drama, Mr. Batten. Uh, it, it was great. Um, but I still didn't like clowns. So anything scary, um, zombies, 
was was good. So I would dress up at Halloween and 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 do some scary things. But you know, I was always a witch, and I found out only a few years ago that I I can actually cackle like a witch. And I I joined a, a haunted house and did that every Halloween for a few years to raise money for the food bank, and uh, it was fun. The only thing I I lost was a bit of my voice because the the cackle would take it away a bit. And well, I'm I'm a, I'm a line actor, and I would be entertaining people in in our big lineup while they were waiting to be terrified by my friends and other family members in there. So um, blending it all together into whether it's a horror film, a scare actor community, and um, local haunts and horror conventions, and mental health and um, just local food bank stuff. If it's something where I can help advocate or just let someone know, you know, there's there's always something that if you need to reach out, there's always someone that you can you can talk to and and relate with. It's awesome. Yeah, I actually worked on my first haunt last year. By the way, Nevermore Baltimore plug. All right, Baltimore. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, Baltimore. Okay. Yeah. Um, but um. And like, it was fun. It was it was definitely fun. It is. It's fun to scare it's a people. Funny experience. Like you said, I, w- I was blown out my voice every single night. So I was hoarse as anything. The next day. Example, yeah. Um, being a voice actor, I knew better. Uh, I would only um, cackle a couple times, uh, like a night, and I actually had it recorded too. But when I was out walking around, you know, it's easier just to belt it out. But I certainly made arrangements with my friends that we had things over the microphones and then also just me doing it very occasionally and uh, carefully. Yeah, I'm a perfectionist. So, like, I always have to go over and above, and I would just blow my voice out. The whole, I was screaming the whole entire time, even when people weren't coming. Like, it was fun, though. It was, it was a fun thing. It was one of the things I, I took off my bucket list. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, I'm very glad I got to do it. We're not doing it anymore. And you know, I'm 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 sad that COVID took those last couple of years away from us, but you know, they'll still have stuff going around the local area that I'll go visit. I actually get to go to places this Halloween, so it'll be fun. All right, next question, horror fan. What iconic horror director do you, would you love to work with? Steven Spielberg. That's easy. Spielberg, okay. Yeah, I was born in the 70s. Um, it's just Cujo scared the crap out of me as a kid. Uh, you mean Stephen King? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, did I not say Stephen King? You said Spielberg. Oh, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Stephen yeah. King and Spielberg. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, I'm just looking at my list of them. I have, I have multiple... Um, directors it depends on where you are like if I could choose a Canadian director versus um someone worldwide like I know Canada's not that big but we have some uh great uh Deadpool people that are around Canada once in a while that I would love to visit with um you know Ryan Reynolds isn't always around but it would be fun for Canadians to have the opportunity to hang out with him up here in Alberta not just Vancouver, um, but any kind of 80s or 90s filmmakers that I um, enjoyed. Oh, the director from Blair Witch has always been, Blair Witch was one of my favorites. And, you know, with everything coming out recently with Blair Witch's anniversary, it was I was, of course, intrigued in that. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a handful of, of directors and writers that I would choose but most of them are scary um, yeah most of them are scary I'm I listen uh, for for me Wes Craven is like the you know I'm, I'm a huge Freddy Nightmare I'm three uh, oh me too yeah all that good stuff but, I love yeah. Freddy I love Freddy but I don't know I love Freddy but Cujo and some scary things yeah. Cujo definitely scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I like, didn't like dogs because of that movie. <laughs> because it was a real thing. You know what I mean? It's something that could actually happen. I was terrified of the car scene. 
Yeah, I couldn't. No. Yeah. <laughs> so if it had anything to do with that, anything to do with dogs, um, definitely a script. Not not my little dog. He wouldn't be very scary, but, you know, a big Cujo dog would be scary. So, Jamie, where can everyone find you? I get most of my social media with my Instagram. It's jamie.hill.vo. I'm on Facebook. I do most of my responding, though, on Instagram. I like posting my stories and, and reels throughout Facebook and Instagram. But I'm also um, on LinkedIn and um, IMDb. I can get messages through any of those social media links, really. I can't promise I will answer on all of those. Oh, the, the Instagram is the one I, I track the most. And most. my, yeah, my Facebook, I'll answer. It gets quite busy, though. Awesome. Well, Jamie, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on my show. And um, everyone, please check out Skin of Rink. Watch the whole movie, guys. Watch the whole, just watch it to the end. All right. <laughs> I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's not going to be everyone's it's a unique experience. No, but it might. Yeah, give it a chance. Just finish, watch the whole entire movie. I don't know why people are like giving up after twenty minutes. But watch the whole entire movie. Yeah, you didn't even meet me yet. <laughs> exactly. Stick around to at least see Jamie. Um, <laughs> and. Please also check out Grotesque. It's actually yep. streaming on Tubi right yep. now. Tubi, yep. yes, we are. We are on there. Um, we have our Facebook group too. So if yep. you go on there, Elizabeth also runs the Instagram. And uh, you can always watch posts. Brenda's got videos of us doing our, our clips of Grotesque 2. And uh, we, we've had a great summer. I got some good color already from doing a lot of uh, sun and beach scenes uh, last month, but it's it's been a, a, a fun time. We're not done, but we're, we're more, definitely more than halfway there. I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm a huge, I was a huge fan of the first one, but by the way, it's streaming free on Tubi. By the way, Skin and Marink is on streaming right now on Amazon, so yes. definitely check that out on Amazon. Over on Prime now. Well, Jamie, once again, it's been an absolute pleasure. I would definitely love to have you back on. In the that future. sounds good. Yeah, let me know. Most definitely. All right. Everyone, well, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.